A binary tree is such an amazing data structure, right? It is formed in so many ways, it can have so many variations, and hence you can have so many different kinds of problems on it as well, right? In this particular problem on lead code, what you are given is, you are given a sum and this binary tree has some values. Now you have to tell me if there is a path in the binary tree from the root node such that when you add those elements, you arrive at that particular sum, correct? So what can we do about it? Let us try to explore it out. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First, I will explain you the problem statement and we will look at some sample test cases. Next, we will try to approach this problem using a brute force approach and see what limitations you might encounter. Going forward, we will solve for efficiency and try to use the level order traversal technique to land to an optimal solution. After that, as usual, we will also do a dry run of the code so that you can understand and visualize how all of this is actually working in action. Without further ado, let's get started. Let us quickly make sure that we are understanding the problem statement correctly. In this problem, you are given a binary tree and some target value, right? And you have to determine if there is a root to leaf path, which when you add up, it adds up to the target value. So what does that actually mean? Let us look at our first test case. In our first test case, you are given this root value and this binary tree and you have a target value of 22, correct? So you need to determine if there is a path from the root to any of the leaf node that when you add up, that gives you 22. For example, this is one path, 5, 8 and 13. You're starting from a root and going all the way to a leaf, correct? So in this particular test case, if you travel through the path of 5, 4, 11 and then 22, if you add up all of them, you get the value 22, correct? So in this test case, you can write down true as your answer, correct? Similarly, let us look at our test case number two. We have a relatively smaller tree, right? And look at the target value. The target value is just two. So in this tree, although you have two as a node, but there is no way that you can start from the root node and reach the leaf node with this target value. Correct? Because you only have two paths, one and two, that will give you a three or one and three, that will give you a four. So in this particular test case, you will write down false as your answer. Now, if you feel that you're understanding the problem statement even better, feel free to try it out first. Otherwise, let us dive into the solution. When you start to solve this problem, what is the first thing that comes to your mind? What is the first approach? The first approach that you can think is that, okay, I have to find out the path from root to leaf right? So what I can do is I can first of all identify all of the leaf nodes, right? In this particular test case, I have four leaf nodes, right? So just to verify that a solution to this problem exists, what I can do is I can try to write down all the possible paths from root to the leaf, correct? So I will have one path as 5, 4, 11 and 7. Then I will have another path as 5, 4, 11 and 2. And similarly, I will write down all my remaining paths as well. Once you have got all of these paths, you can just add all of them. Now, these are all the possible sums that you can obtain from root to the leaf of this binary tree, correct? And you just have to verify that if you can find the target sum of 22. You can see that you are able to achieve this target sum of 22 if you follow this path, correct? So you can simply return true as your answer. Right? In this case, instead of 22, if it would have been 33, then no matter what path do you take, you cannot arrive at 33, right? And hence, you would have given a false as your output, correct? So this solution works and it will give you a correct answer every time. But the problem with this approach is it will take up a lot of time and that time will be mostly consumed when you are iterating through this entire tree, trying to find out all the possible paths. Think about it. If you have a lot of branches, then you will have a lot of leaf nodes as well, right? And you will have to determine the sum of all of these paths, correct? So that is going to take up a lot of time. Certainly, we need to be smart about doing it. So let me show you one technique how you can go about approaching this problem. Once again, I take up my example of binary tree. And okay, let 22 be the target value. So right now, when you are finding these sums, you are going from the root all the way to the leaf node, right? And in doing that, you take up a lot of time. 
you start from the root and go all the way to the leaf node, right? If you find a target sum, well, good. If not, you again start from the root and you will try to find an alternate path to some another leaf node. If this is also not good, then you will start and try to find another path, right? So this is where you're taking up a lot of time. So what we can do is, how about if we store the sum that we are getting at each of the level when we are traversing through our tree. So for example, when I'm at my root, what is the sum that I have? I only have the value five, right? And that is my maximum sum. Now what happens when I move on to my second level? I will be adding values, right? So five plus four will give me nine and five plus eight, that will give me 13, correct? So at level two, I get the values nine and 13, right? So now if I have to travel downwards, I do not need to look up what was the value. I already know that if I travel down, the value will be greater than nine and I have to add more to nine itself, correct? So similarly, if I try to add up all of these values from nine, I go to 11 and I get a value 20, 11 to seven, I will get 27 and then 11 to two, I get a 22. Similarly on the right hand side from eight, if I go to 13, I get a value 26. If I go to four, I get a value of 17. If I go to one, I get a value of 18, right? You can see what I'm doing over here, right? Five plus eight, that will give you 13. 13 plus four, that will give you 17. 17 plus one, that will give you 18. And this is how I am determining the maximum possible sum at each of the nodes, correct? Now think like this. Up till now, you were trying to find out all the possible paths, right? Try to look at this problem now from a different angle. So look at each level one by one. At the first level, you find a value five, right? And that is not equal to your target sum, correct? Now move on to the next level. At this next level, you find the values nine and 13, right? They are still not equal to your target level. Move on to the next level. So at the third level, I get these values now, right? 20, 26 and 17. Once again, none of these values match your target, right? So similarly, just move on to the last step now. At the last level, you get your values 27, 22, and an 18, correct? Now verify all of these values with the target value. You can see that 22 matches, right? So this will tell you that, okay, maybe this node, this is a potential candidate for the path sum. You only need to verify one more condition. And that is, is this node a leaf node? So you just need to check if this node has any child nodes. If yes, then it cannot be your candidate. And you will have to return a false because you couldn't find any value. But if you see that, okay, this does not have any child nodes and hence this is a leaf node. So you can see that, yes, I found a path and you can simply return true because 22 was found. Similarly, let me tweak this problem a little bit. Let us say the target value was 26 instead of 22. Now think about it. When I am traversing through all of my sums, first of all, I get a five. This does not match 26. Then I get 9 and 13. This does not match 26. Then I get the values 20, 26 and 27, right? So voila, you found a 26 and this matches. When you verify your node, you again see that, okay, this does not have any child nodes. This is a leaf node. So this can be a valid path, right? And hence you will simply stop over here and return true as your answer. So you can see that how you're able to skip all the remaining calculations, right? You do not have to go through them. However, there is one more thing you need to take care of. For example, let us say this tree had one more node over here, right? Now, when you're going through the value, you see a five, nope, does not match. Then you see a nine and a 13, nope, does not match. Then you see 20, 26 and 17, right? You would say that, okay, 26 matches. But now when you look at this node, you see that this node has a child as well, right? So this will not be a potential candidate for your path sum because the complete paths will be formed by adding all of these four nodes and this value will not equal to the target sum. And hence this cannot be your answer. So once again, you will have to move on to the last step and then once again, try to compare all the values. So this way you can find a efficient solution just by traversing all of these nodes only once. And how do you do that? Let us try to understand it with a try run of the code. On the left side of your screen, you have the actual code to implement this solution. And on the right, I have a sample tree whose root is passed in as an input parameter to the function. Oh, and by the way, this complete code and its test cases are also available in my GitHub profile. 
So moving on with the dry run. First of all, I have a base case that if root equals to null, that means there is no path and I will simply return a false, right? Moving ahead, do you remember how we were traversing the tree? We were traversing it one level at a time, right? So that tells you that you need to have a level order traversal technique. But you have to maintain all the sums as well, right? The sum at each node. So this tells me that I should need two stacks. One of the stack to maintain the order in which I'm getting all the nodes and one of the stack will just maintain what is the sum at each of the node. So I create two stacks over here. One is a path stack that will contain all of my nodes and one is a sum stack that will contain all of my sums. To start off things, what we're going to do is we will push the value of root to both of our stacks, right? So in a path stack, we're actually going to add the root node five. And in my sum stack, I will just add the sum and that is five, right? And both of them are done in this step, correct? Moving on with the dry run, I will now start a while loop that will traverse through this entire tree based upon what do I have in my stack. So when I start it, first of all, I take out both of these temporary values and I pop them from my stack. I get my node five and similarly, I will get my value five. Both of them are popped from the stack. Now you will check, is this node a leaf node? Since this node is not a leaf node, it cannot be a candidate for our path sum, right? Because it has children. So moving on with a level order traversal, what I'm going to do is I will take its children and put it into my stack. So first I will take this node eight and I will add it to my path stack. So I added a node eight and then I need to add the sum as well, right? So I'm going to look up at this value five and I will add it to eight. So five plus eight will give me 13, correct? So you can see that I am maintaining an equivalent of the node and its sum. And if you remember, we were doing just that, right? At the root node, the sum was five. At the node eight, the sum is 13, correct? Now five has one more child node and that is the left node. So I will take this four and I will add it to my path stack. And similarly, what I'm going to do is I will look at this value that I popped and I will add four to it. So five plus four gives me nine. And in my sum stack, I will add nine over here. So you can see how I am maintaining this relationship at every node. I know exactly that. Okay. This will be the sum at this point, right? So we are doing exactly the same thing that we just discussed a couple of minutes ago, right? Now keep moving ahead. You have to do a level order traversal, right? So node number nine should come next. Look in your stack. Now, what do you have? You have this node four, right? So pop this out. And because we have to work with our sum nine, just pop this out. Once again, you're going to do the same thing. Compare if this node is a candidate for path sum, because it has child nodes, you are going to add those child nodes to your path stack. And you're going to add those subsequent sums to your sum stack. And then eventually what will happen is this loop will go on. You will iterate through each of the node and the sum at every node, correct? If your sum matches the target sum, that means you stop right over there and simply return a true. And if you complete the loop, that means you were unable to find any sum that matched the target value, you simply need to return a false. And that will be your answer. The time complexity of this solution is order of n because you are iterating through all the nodes only once. And the space complexity of this solution is also order of n because you need some space to maintain both of these stacks. I hope I was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you. As per my final thoughts, I just want to say that the level order traversal technique is very, very, very important. You can realize its potential, right? It enables you to iterate through every node in the tree and it is also beneficial when you are trying to debug your code. So the level order traversal technique will have a lot of applications whenever you are solving tree based problems. I know that recursion is also a trick when you are doing tree based problems but then it becomes very difficult to understand and visualize what is actually happening behind the scenes. So there is your tip of the day. Always watch out for level order traversal technique. You never know when it can become very, very handy. So while going through this video, did you face any problems? Have you seen any other problems where the level order traversal technique was very, very handy? Tell me everything in the comment section below and I would love to discuss all of them with you. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I can simplify programming for you. Also, let me know what problems do you want me to solve next. 
Until then, see ya.